Records show that 70% of Nigeria's population is made up of those we classify as youth. And so it reasons that any developmental plan by government must target that critical segment of the population. And so to understand what this government is doing and plans to do in terms of addressing the needs of those people that we know as youth, we are going to have the Minister of Sports and Youth Development, Sunday Dari, on special interview. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Let's begin with one of the events that has you know, been in the, on the table for everyone to discuss, and that is the NSAS protest that took place about one year ago. It has come with several interpretations. Let me find out from you, when you hear that word NSAS, what comes to your mind? Well, what comes to my mind is the fact that the youth of our country are important part of our growth and development as a country. And that as a country, we must seek to engage our youth, we must seek to deepen our conversations with them, but also we must continue on a consistent basis to provide opportunities for our youth. But however, that is underscored by the fact that in a democracy and in a country where there's law and order, whatever demands any group of the society has, whether it's the youth, the adults, the students, the lawyers, the teachers, there are acceptable norms and standards that you must meet and processes that must be followed to be able to achieve whatever demands. Okay, one year after that incident, the police is still licking the wounds inflicted upon it by the protest, uh, about not less than 16 police officers were killed and several police stations were burnt, you know, destroyed completely during that period. Some states will require extra effort and investment to get over the, the pain, it, you know, the destruction that came upon them, Lagos, Oyo, and many other states. With the benefit of hindsight, would you think that the situation then could have been managed better first by the protesters themselves and then the authorities? Absolutely. You know, let me just say that it is regrettable that the police suffered the number of deaths that they suffered. Because the closest level and point of security to the civil populace is the Nigerian police. And I dare say that the level of banditry and kidnapping and crime that we have seen rise up is because an average policeman is afraid of his life and no longer willing to answer that full call of duty. I honestly believe that it ought not to have degenerated to the level that it did. The destruction of property, the number of deaths we recorded beyond the police, so many people, innocent lives also went. And it brings up the issue of at what point does a protest have to end and return to some level of dialogue and conversation? It ought not to have gotten to that level because sometimes we know clearly now that that protest was hijacked. It had no control and because it had no clear leaders, it had no clear faces that could stand up to say enough, let's go forward we had the destruction, the loss of lives that we had. But of course, there are lessons learned from that because eventually things settled down, demands were met. We had almost virtually every state in the Federation looking into the issue of uh, police atrocities, what transpired during that process. We've seen the calming down of nerves all around. And I think all parties, the police, the government, the youth themselves, I've realized that things ought to have been done differently. And we move forward in a very proactive way to make sure that the engagement between the youth and the government, the engagement, the interface between the youth and the police, the re restoration of trust between the police and the civil society, that that process, I believe, has already begun. And that's why one year down the road, we've not really had any kind of flashpoint like that 
at all, but we've had efforts on all sides, at all levels, trying to deepen the engagement and collaborations. We agree now that the protesters could have done things differently, but some studies have shown that or have claimed that why it went the way it did was because the people do not trust the government, even when government came out to say that we are disbanding SARS and well, announced see, some of the lack of, lack of trust cannot be the basis for illegality, for destruction of land My and property, is, cannot be a justification. You can't say because you don't trust a process or you don't trust a government, then you take laws into your hands. When you take away enforcement of laws, respect for laws, even in societies like America and North America, where we, we look at them and we hold them up, the level of respect for the law, the application and enforcement of the law, keeps everyone in check. We have seen similar protests, worse protests in America. We have seen that even in instances when they have really gone into riots, we have seen repercussions come thereafter. We saw what happened on January 6th on the Capitol. You can place both side by side. Lack of trust in government cannot be a justification but to there, unleash mayhem on the society. Okay, but are there things that the government would do or could do to regain the confidence of the people that they are leading? Because without that trust, uh, it, it, it may be quite difficult for government to you know, make reasonable who, who defines Who defines that trust? Who defines that confidence or the level of confidence? Government has a responsibility. And for government, it's for government to see how are we meeting the responsibilities. To what extent are we keeping to the promise of a better society, a better economy, support and opportunities for our youth, health services, provision of infrastructure. Now, when we look at that, we've got data. You can't, you can't question the facts. As to the fact that this government under President Mahmoud Buhari has been making incremental effort. We've seen a president that has been working to bridge that deficit of trust between the government and the public. Now, who determines when that level has been reached? You sit over there, I'm here. I can see the cup half full. You can see it half empty. But I see the cup half full because efforts have been made. Maybe it has not reached that critical mass that we expect, but don't forget some of the challenges and the issues brought up by the youth of this country. P legitimate issues, they did not start six years ago or five years ago. We have had successive governments. Every government is supposed to, on an incremental basis, deal with the critical issues of youth, of economic development, provision of health, road, critical infrastructure. Then another government comes and builds on that. And I think if previous governments had done their bit to the level expected, the lifting wouldn't have been as heavy as it is.